Welcome to the channel, I'm Rob. Today we're going to be painting ultramarines with a sponge. So it's great to see the interaction. I put up a, a reel um, uh, the other day um, about uh, this tutorial and it was really interesting to see the engagement. Uh, this is a great alternative uh, if you need uh, uh, to use something other than an airbrush but you still want some contrast on your minis. Um, and I'll talk through um, why a sponge is, is useful in a bit. Um, but here I'm just showing you the main colors that we're gonna be using. So we've got deep blue by the Army Painter, matte white by the Army Painter, and we've got uh, magic blue speed paint. If you watch my Ultramarines vehicle tutorial, um, I use magic blue uh, for, um, uh, for that tutorial as well. And you can see here we've got the uh, fist that's primed in white, and I actually gave this a gloss varnish as well. Um, you can use a rattle can gloss varnish, you could use one through the airbrush if you have one as well. I just wanna show you uh, the sponging. Uh, I, I'm not gonna assume everybody knows how to do sponging, but basically you dip your sponge in paint, you get rid of the excess by dabbing it on kitchen towel or on a surface. And then at that point, you can then um, sponge it on. Now you don't wanna overload your model, your mini uh, with paint, uh, and you wanna build up the layers gradually, wait for it to dry. And certainly uh, that will create some excellent contrast as well. Now, the reason I've used deep blue here is because I wanna just soften the transition from uh, the white to the black, because I think that it would have been too strong uh, the transition. Now you could argue, well, why not use something like gray uh, instead of this blue? And absolutely, I did kind of uh, agonize over what I would use to, to soften the transition between the white and the black. Um, but I, I just ended up on the blue, just wanted to try it. Um, but I think it would be important to use something like blue or a gray in order to soften the transition. Otherwise, I think that when you applied your speed paint over the top, I think the it would have been just too harsh. Um, and it wouldn't have been given a, a natural fade that we're looking for. As you can see here though, on this model, this has uh, just been given um, one or two layers of sponging. Now I've used a tiny little bit of sponge. I've used a kitchen sponge, uh, one with a scourer attached and then just ripped off the scourer and then got a set of tweezers and then built up, uh, built up the blue, particularly focusing on areas where the light hits. You can see the top of the shoulder pads there are, are kind of a, um, uh, 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 have a kind of more blue to them in the front of the leg. And what you can see here is uh, I'm adding on the white. Now, um, it is a super harsh transition. I know I was saying that you want to so soften the transitions, but it is super harsh when you start adding that white on. And of course it will be. If you want to soften it slightly, you could always use something like white, for example, but you'll see with the end effect that it, that it does work. Um, and what you can see here, I'm being quite focused with this uh, sponge. Um, and I think the only way that we can keep real focus and precision is actually using a set of tweezers. Um, I wouldn't do this with my, uh, I wouldn't do this with my, my fingers. So uh, yeah, get, get a pair of tweezers. Um, and then here you can see with the white, I'm focusing on areas where the light would hit. And I'm also focusing on that bolt casing as well. We'll come back to that in a bit. Uh, but the top of the shoulder pads, uh, um, the the front of the legs, the particular armor panels that will get light, so that knee pad in a minute, you'll see um, uh, that I focus on. But also, I'm gonna try and catch any edges as well with this sponge. So the bottom of the shoulder pads, I'm gonna, um, gonna catch in a bit. Um, so it, this means that we don't need to edge highlight because we are essentially just catching those raised edges, and then it will have a nice natural edge highlight when we apply our um, apply our magic blue over the top of it. Um, and as I say, you really need to use um, uh, a, a sponge here, but also the benefit of the sponge is that we can also create some quite nice scratches. So we don't need just a sponge up and down. We can also create scratches, scratches we can catch edges um, as well. Uh, which just makes it such a versatile tool. And actually, the sponge can be used for battle damage in this way to create scratches that don't necessarily need to be done with a, uh, with a sponge as well. I build up those white layers quite a lot. 
um, and those areas that I want to be super bright, those certainly the top of the shoulder pads I'm most interested in. I'll give a second layer of white as well, top of the knee pad, the front of the uh, front of the leg, the chest as well. Magic Blue Speed Paint. I really rate the uh, Speed Paints uh, by Army Painter. I think they're excellent. Really good coverage. Uh, they flow really really nicely. I've not had any issues with uh, Speed Paint 2.0, the, the the newer range, um, but what I would say here is that I've not added any water or medium to this speed paint. This is literally straight out of the bottle. And you, although I've speeded up the video, I am actually trying to move my brush, brush quite quick uh, over um, this so it doesn't pull. And I think that's something that you've got to be really aware of um, in this process. You don't want too much pulling. You do need to do this a bit controlled. You know, you're saving time by not having to do any edge highlights or anything like that. So um, you can afford to spend a bit more time just being a bit careful about using this speed paint. So you can see I'm going back over places where I think actually it's starting to pull and just picking them up. But you need to do this, the whole model in one go, uh, just to make sure that you've caught all areas where it might be pulling. It's a really lovely blue, magic blue. Uh, it's got some real punch to it. And I would say that although I've used this for Ultramarines, you could definitely use this for something like Night Lords as well. Um, it's got that vibrancy to it that you might expect from a Night Lords armor plate. Uh, I just think it looks really interesting for Ultramarines and just a bit different. Uh, Blood Red Speed Paint. Uh, I'm just going to quickly do the uh, bolter casing here exactly the same way that I did the blue. Uh, just no thinner, no medium on on the red uh, just simply applying it and so make sure that you do your bolter casing uh, when you're doing your sponging as well you don't want to you don't want to fig, uh, forget that you could do it any color that you wanted you could even do it a black um, and it would still have some natural highlights but I would say if you wanted to do a black bolter casing the uh, I'm going to do grim black but I think that if you're doing something like black over essentially pure white you'd probably need two thin coats of uh, that speed paint to get something that would look close to black rather than just white that's had a speed paint over it. Uh, next up, uh, Night Scales and Greedy Gold. Um, and I'm gonna go over all the metallic areas now. Um, and here you're gonna see, basically it really starts to come together. There's not a lot of metallics actually on this model. And it's up to you whether you do um, kind of the, I guess the, um, the reinforced struts around the armor, uh, whether you do those metallics or not. I ended up doing them metallic, uh, so it took a bit longer, but there's not a lot of metallics on, on this model really. Um, and for this model, I chose to do the armor ribbing a metallic just to save time. Often I'd do it, say, a light grey, and then use a speed paint, uh, and that would give it kind of just some natural highlighting. Uh, but I just chose to do them silver here. And you can see those struts in between um, uh, the armour panels I've, I've also done um, uh, silver. And then I've used the gold on um, uh, on just on the chest plate. Uh, there's a couple of areas of gold. There's one on the bolter as well and one on the arm. Uh, what I would say about this particular gold is that it does need two or three coats. It, the coverage isn't amazing on it. Um, but I actually thought after the oil washes and the things went down that it was quite a nice gold against that blue armor. So we're going to use uh, Tamiya uh, masking tape. This is two millimeter masking tape, uh, and this kind of masking tape uh, is for curved surfaces. So if you see a white masking tape from Tamiya like this, it's designed for curved surfaces. Uh, so it just kind of bends and f uh, morphs in a way that, say, normal masking tape would not. And that's useful because we're going to be doing a curved surface um, with our uh, power armor. Now you could paint them. Uh, paint the stripes if you wanted to. Uh, I have decided not to. Um, just I just want to cut down on as much time as possible. I just want to make this process really easy. So as I said before, I gave this a white undercoat just with a rattle can, and then I gave it a gloss varnish to protect it so no paint would lift up while we were doing this process. Uh, the, the, you always run a risk when using masking tape that you 
lift off paint and that's really the last thing you want because you're just going to have to start the whole process again and more more likely you're probably going to have to um, uh, kind of, um, take the paint off strip it and then do it all over again as well otherwise it's just it's just not going to look very nice so you can see here uh, laying down the masking tape uh, and I'm putting bits of masking tape all along it and then lifting up the ones uh, in between so the um, uh, each part without masking tape is the same distance apart as the parts with masking tape. Now, all I did was then went outside, gave it a rattle can of uh, black, and then lifting off, and we've got this kind of candy stripe black and uh, black and uh, white. Now, I'm coming along now with a just a scalpel, sharp scalpel, um, now, I will do some battle damage in a bit, but actually I'm just starting that battle damage process, that wear and tear, uh, by creating little nicks and scratches in that black just with a scalpel. Um, and because it's protected underneath from the gloss varnish, I'm not too worried about lifting paint off at all. Um, and in fact, if I do lift a bit of paint off, I'm not going to worry about it too much here. But mainly I'm just taking off the black just to create those elements of scratches. Now I could, again, do this with white paint, but the problem with white over black is you're gonna need two or three coats to get good coverage. Whereas this way is just quick and easy and uh, uh, nice and simple. So maize yellow, use it over the entirety of the fist, even go over the uh, black elements uh, because obviously we've got all those nicks and scratches that we want uh, kind of shining through uh, that black where the paint is lifted off. And then I've got, um, orange speed paint here and I just want to add a little bit of contrast to uh, to the fist um, and just on those shaded areas you can see me pushing and pulling the paint into uh, the shaded area so we just got a little bit of contrast it's quite a rough um, in fact it's very rough what I just did there but the oil paints are going to hide a lot of that roughness um, so I'm not going to worry about it uh, too much so we need to uh, gloss varnish our mini uh, because we're going to add some transfers. So you can't add transfers without doing a gloss varnish. That's just the long and the short of it. And if you, somebody says, yes, you can, that you just can't, basically. Uh, you need a nice smooth surface over which you can put your transfer. So you need micro set and micro sole. Other, there are other um, uh, uh, products uh, that help you uh, adhere transfers to a model but the, this one I've just used all the time and I just find it really, really good. Uh, microset and Microsol. Microset has number one on it. Microsol has number two on it, so it tells you which way around to do it. Microset you put down first just with a paintbrush and then you put the transfer over the top of it. Then leave it to dry. I would leave it to dry for about 10 minutes, no more than that. Then I take Microsol and I actually dip a cotton wool bud into the micro sole and then I gently roll over the cotton wool bud uh, over the transfer and that just helps it to adhere to the miniature. Now if you don't leave it to dry properly the micro set this happens which is that you accidentally nudge um, uh, nudge the transfer which isn't what I wanted but it, you can correct it if you work speedily. So all you do is roll it over and I would do that uh, leave it for 10 minutes and then I would do it again and I usually for transfers do that twice that process and then it will adhere really smoothly then we need to these things are painted on so we need some scratches in there as well we can't just have uh, scratches on a on a power fist and not scratches on any place that has been uh, painted on so um, what I'm doing here I'm just taking that blue that we used before and I'm just very gently uh, creating some scratches uh, some dents and some nicks in that paintwork to make it look realistic. And then I'm taking oak brown mixed in with a little bit of black here uh, with a sponge again and then just starting to lay down a little bit of weathering, the ceramite underneath essentially. Now you could use uh, silver if you wanted to um, in for your scratches. You could use this oak brown and then plus a little bit of silver. So the oak brown represents older scratches and then silver represents kind of newer scratches. 
I just like uh, oak brown mixed in with a little bit of black um, uh, for um, for my scratches. I think it looks really good on whatever kind of plate, even silver plate. I think it looks looks really really good on. Um, and it particularly this mix works really well on yellow. I found um, so just those areas where you think that there are going to be nicks and scratches. You know the feet, corners the power fist, etc. Then I give it another gloss varnish. So that's now all protected. So those transfers are all protected, all the battle damage we've just created is all protected, all the silver works protected, everything is protected because we're gonna use uh, some quite harsh uh, oil paints and spirits. And I'm gonna use a, a, a odorless white spirit. I'm gonna mix it in with a little bit of burnt umber uh, by Windsor and Newton. And you can see here just a very old uh, Kalinsky brush that is not good any longer for um, for uh, painting with acrylics, uh, but can be used for uh, oils. So just transition older brushes out for this kind of job. You can use synthetic brushes for this as well. And I'm going to go along and I'm going to pin wash it. Now I'm not going to be too careful with this. Um, I, I can afford to be a little bit messy. Uh, I can afford to be a little bit slapdash. But what I'm not doing is completely coating the entire model in this uh, in this mix. Uh, I the problem is if you did that, you'd use it as a filter and it would change the blue completely. And I still want that quite vibrant blue that we've created. So that's something to bear in mind. The moment you use this completely over the blue, it will act as a filter and change the color underneath completely, uh, which isn't what I want. I still want that vibrancy left behind. So I'm still using it carefully, but if I do make a mistake, it's all okay because we can uh, afford to clear it up. Uh, I'm also using this almost like a uh, sort of a, a, a build up of grime. You know, if these guys are fighting uh, in battle, you know, in campaigns that might last week or months or whatever, um, then, uh, you know, grime will build up over time. Uh, you know, this is not a newly forged uh, Dreadnought armor deep striking. Uh, this is uh, perhaps they've you know, been fighting on a whirl for some time. Uh, then I take a cotton wool bud again, uh, and then with some uh, new mineral spirits, some clean mineral spirits. Once the oil paint is dry, I give it maybe 30 minutes, and you can hit it with a hairdryer to speed up the process. Uh, I just wipe away any excess, uh, so it leaves behind. Um, uh, all of that oil paint in those nooks and crannies. Uh, so we've got definition, definition in the armor plates, but anywhere I've been a bit too slapdash with it, uh, I um, I then can clear away. So it leaves that lovely bright blue behind, that vibrant blue behind, uh, but it creates that kind of grimy look. And here you can see I've used a matte varnish. Uh, so this is just Army Painter's uh, matte varnish that I've used here. Um, but you can use a rattle can uh, matte varnish, which is what I've used here, um, or you could use an airbrush matte varnish as well. Uh, and then I've just given it, um, I've just uh, based it uh, as well, you know, with a texture paint. I've used a red one because, of course, red or that orangey red contrasts with the blue so nicely, uh, and it's a uh, you know having a contrasting base to the colour of the model. Is, is a great idea to make your models pop. And then here, you can see me going back in just with straight up greedy gold. Now, it's really important that, you know, we have quite a grimy model and we don't want to make all these metallics super duper bright. We don't want to refine them too much here uh, because it will just look so out of place against such a grimy, battle-worn armor. But it does need a little bit of definition after we've given it a matte. Uh, a, a matte varnish, uh, otherwise it just looks completely dull. And then uh, a very simple dry brush with a bright silver, uh, whatever bright silver you've got, I think I used plate mail here, um, just on the silver elements. I didn't catch all the silver elements, I didn't catch in between the arm and ribbing, I didn't bother to do that, you know, there's enough definition with the oil paints there, um, you yeah, know, just the, just the inside of that, um, uh, uh, that's also armor, but that's it. That's all you need to do for the silvers. Nothing more complicated than that. A couple of people asked me about uh, basing. So here you can see I've just used obviously the texture paint. Uh, here I'm going in with a um, sort of a, a, a light earth kind of um, color. I, I don't remember the brand, but you know, there are loads of companies that do weathering powders. So I've gone with a, a light earth. Then I've gone in with uh, a 
a reddy color, like a Martian red color. And I'm just mushing it into the base, but I would use uh, two weathering powders, maybe three weathering, pow weather weathering powders to give you some variation. Uh, and then you can, from there, add some white spirit uh, to your base, the white spirit that we used previously. Um, and that will help to fix uh, the pigments in place and then we can just leave that to naturally dry and I would really recommend that you leave that to naturally dry it may take a while uh, but yeah what my one recommendation when when you're doing this just leave it to naturally dry it will take an hour or two you could even put it in the airing cupboard but I probably wouldn't hit it with a hairdryer and what you can see here is the finished mini that's it it's complete it's as simple as that you don't need an airbrush uh, I did this all with rattle cans and I did this all with sponges uh, and speed paints essentially and it creates a really interesting vibrant uh, blue I think the face is probably a little bit pale I went over the top uh, with it but perhaps he just yeah you know, from the it was somebody from the 500 world who the world didn't get particularly a lot of sun or something like that uh, but I hope it's been useful for you guys I hope you can see how quickly you can create a marine uh, just from a sponge and create that really cool contrast on a uh, model without an airbrush. I hope you enjoyed it. If you watch this video, do not forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video and don't forget to comment as well. And I hope to see you on the next one. Take care, guys. See you soon.